On this episode, I'll show you the pros and cons of owning an A-frame camper. If you're thinking of buying one of these unique RVs, you won't want to miss the many useful tips and experiences that I'm going to share with you in this video. And be sure to stick around to the end where I share the inside of my A-frame camper with one of the most unique animals in nature. All that is coming up. So when I was looking for an RV, I had a long list of things that I was looking for. The main thing was being able to park this thing in my garage. I was tired of paying storage fees on a larger unit that we used to have, like a 35 foot trailer. Beautiful unit, but what a pain to have to store that in the winter time. This particular unit fits right in my garage. It's about five feet high when all folded down, 19 feet long, fits perfectly in a garage. So that was number one thing on my list. Another thing is that it had to be off-road capable. You can see it's got a lift, it's got large knobby tires. It looks good and it kind of matches the style of the travel that I do with my Tacoma, which also has a lift and big tires on it. Other thing it had to have would be a heater, a small kitchen, a stove, and be good enough size for two adults. Check, 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 and check. Other thing I was looking for was hard sides. Definitely not into tent trailers because where I go, there's a lot of big critters. Grizzly bears, yeah, I love to see them, you know, from the comfort of something hard between me and that particular animal. So no soft-sided uh, units. I didn't want a, a teardrop. It's just too small. It's just basically a bedroom on wheels with a kitchen sort of stuck at the back. Very light, very portable. It's good for some people, just not my style. I like to be able to cook on a rainy day inside instead of having to set up some kind of tent unit or whatever. I just like the, the privacy of having that stuff inside if I want to use it. It's got a full-size mattress in it. It fits me, I'm 6'2". I think it's about six foot four on the inside, so it's absolutely perfect that way. I can put another adult on the other side in the kitchen area, or the kitchenette. It's a little bit narrower. It fits two separate people that are not a couple, which is important to me because I go traveling either with my son or my brother. When I go with my wife, it, it's even a nice place for me to sleep over there sometimes because I got more room. But when I got it and I started using it is when I started noticing the issues, which I'm bringing up in this video. Overall, even despite all the issues, it's still, after a year, the right unit for me. And I bought it primarily. The number one reason is to go on a big overlanding trip this coming fall. So 10 weeks, 12,000 kilometers, 50 plus rivers of fly fishing. I mean, this is going to handle it. There's no doubt. A super nice feature about the A-frame camper is that it has an exterior shower. Nothing like having a nice warm shower when you're camping. I have taken the shower head off of this and the reason being is that I have an external shower tent that I've purchased. There's quite a few of them online. The one I use is the Julka Single, made in Australia. Purchased it on Amazon. I'll put a link in the description below. And I've rigged up a system where I can have a nice warm shower outside. A huge advantage to the A-frame camper is the exterior storage. On this camper, there's a large storage area in the front. You can put grandma and grandpa on there if you want, your kids, your walkers, whatever you want. Big storage. I've got all my big stuff that goes in here. This thing is the full width of the camper and I'd say about 18, 20 inches across. You can access it from, there's a door there and there's a door on this side as well. At the rear, there's a storage area here, which I call my garage. That's all my tools and paraphernalia to keep the camper going. On this side here, another huge storage area, not going to open up. There's other videos out there that'll show you that. When you lift that up, this is a big storage area underneath the main bed. Tons of stuff you can put in there. I've just got bedding in there that I don't use that often. And another storage unit is right in here. Looks like a small door, but that is the dinette storage area so the entire dinette the one side is about three feet long and about a foot and a half deep and maybe about a foot and a half wide so a fair bit of storage uh, inside that i keep a lot of kitchen related items and that is it for the exterior storage 
This particular model has great ground clearance. So if you're doing any kind of back road, off road driving, uh, this is wonderful. There's probably about, oh, I'm going to guess about 20 inches, 22 inches of clearance under there. Uh, there's just an axle, I believe, at the back here that could potentially get in the way and a couple of other brackets. But other than that, some decent clearance on this one. Some of the other units that are not the lifted version, they're probably about six inches lower. They have just the one step instead of the two. So uh, that may be an issue for you if you need some ground clearance. But this is the Rockwood A122 SESP model. A nice feature on this camper is that it has two 20 pound propane tanks. More than enough for about two weeks worth of camping. I'm using two 6 volt batteries instead of the standard 12 volt battery that it normally comes with. Highly recommend you switch over to 6 volt batteries, folks. They'll last a whole lot longer and definitely get some locks for them because batteries like to disappear in the middle of the night for some reason. Something you're going to love about the A-frame camper is a large comfy bed. This is almost a full-size mattress, super comfortable. There's even a plug-in heater for this thing with a little thermostat control. This is definitely a really nice bed to sleep in. Here's the dinette area that makes into a bed. The table does fold down. It's a little bit hard to get those legs to fold in properly. When you do, that table drops down and forms the middle part of the bed. The mattresses are a little on the hard side, so you definitely need to get a blow-up air mattress of some sort, which is pretty standard in most campers or, or trailers these days with the dinette seating. But a nice little feature to have is this little extra sleeping area. It's good for two small kids or one adult. Here's the kitchen area. It has a sink. It has a three-burner stove and a pretty small Dometic fridge, but it works great. Not a whole lot of storage underneath the uh, sink area, but overall, very functional, very useful, especially if you do need to do some cooking inside if it's cold out or if it's raining out. Get a look at the size of these windows. That's a real advantage of having a A-frame peak in there. You get that extra little window area on the top, lets in tons of light. So here's the one side. There's the other side, not quite as large, maybe about half the size, but still tons of light coming in here. There's little sliders on the bottom with screens, and there's a big slider window over there. If you're a tall person, the A-frame camper just might be for you. Inside, I could reach exactly eight feet, and that is an eight foot peak right there. Now, if you move over about a foot, and I'm 6'2", so, you know, my head's is hitting, but a lot of space in here. Where the floor space is, you walk anywhere in the floor space, you've got great headroom. If you're 6'5", six, six, even, you're going to be okay in here for head space. Lots of room. What I'm going to share with you really is first world problems. I get it. In the grand scheme of things, you know, problems with your camper aren't really that big of a deal. But from my perspective, I'm gonna show you the issues that I'm having with this thing and you decide whether it's a real problem for you or not. I'm just gonna do a quick walk around just so you can get an idea of what I'm pointing out to you on the outside and then we'll take you on the inside after. This door actually leaks and it leaks badly. What it leaks is dust. The dust comes through. You can see the dust on the on the door frame over here. It's because the door doesn't fit very well. And you can see all the dust here in the hinges. That's an issue. This door just does not fit properly. You can see that there's a bit of a gap in here. It's a bit loose. And the rubber seal here just doesn't really have the right fit. Now remember, this is an off-road vehicle. Off-road, the thing gets dirty. It's going to be on a dusty road. And it's dirty right now because I came in on a dusty, dirty road. That's one of the main points right there, is that it's just built kind of flimsy. And I'll show you some other flimsy parts as well. If you're going on a dirt road, these vents are going to get all plugged up with dust and dirt and mud. If you're on a muddy road, 
it just doesn't make sense. There's got to be at least some kind of a way to shut this off so that you can like, or just a cover, some kind of a cover you can put on. I'm going to have to jimmy something uh, for when I go on the dirt roads because this thing just literally just sucks the, the dirt right into it. And then I'm going to have to go clean this thing out after. Heaven forbid if there's any mud that ever gets into that. All right, another issue I have are these little reflector covers over here. That one just fell off on a dirt road. Yeah, they're just little snap-on types and they can just be picked off really super easy with a little rock hitting them. I've seen other ones on here or on other units that are much better than, you can just see that this one here just kind of moves. Pretty flimsy construction. I can just take my fingernail and just pop this thing off. Just so easy. There you go, it was just that quick. And they just snap on and they come off just as easy. You see this uh, big bubble wind over here? At the front of the trailer, there's two smaller ones. They're identical. They're just kind of got a bit of a bubble. You can see that. Well, nice to have light coming in, but we've got the two big windows on either side. And honestly, you can't see through this thing anyways. They're so smoked out and they get so gritted from road grit and dirt that they just get completely sandblasted and you just cannot even see through these things at all. Another issue with them is they leak horribly. I mean, like water leaks. Uh, if you look up other uh, YouTube videos, they'll, they'll point out exactly the same problem. Or you go into the forums for A-frame campers, you will find that a lot of people have had problems with these units. These are the screw holes, the original screw holes that they use to attach these windows to the actual unit itself. And wherever there was a hole, there started a little stress fracture. So this is just plastic. You can just bend it with your hand. You can see how, how thin that actually is. If you put too much pressure on it, it's just going to crack on you. And then you're really hooped because these are expensive to replace. These little stress fractures start at these little holes here. And you can just see them. They start running along in here. And those will leak. Sometimes they'll come right up to the corners in here. And I didn't discover that until uh, the early part of this year when I went on a trip prior to me purchasing it a year ago they replaced this all they did a nice job they taped it all off and they put sealant down but they didn't do it all the way so i went to a dealership just recently and told him about the problem and he suggested this self-leveling stuff i can't remember who the manufacturer of it look it up it's uh it's quite common in the rv industry this thing worked like a miracle so i just spread it down i put it down let it sort of self-level a little bit so i just took a little plastic spatula and kind of helped it along you can see how I kind of like, you know, daubed it along in here just to get it up on the sides here in case there was stretch fractures there as well. What a huge difference it made. So big rainstorm happened on the second night that I had it out after installing it and completely bone dry on the inside. So highly recommend you watch for these stress fractures. And if you see any at all and it hasn't got any sealant on it, you got to reseal your windows or they're going to leak. All right, folks, we are underneath the trailer. I just want to show you what this looks like here. There is a lot of wiring under here, as there needs to be, but it's all exposed. Every bit of wiring in here is exposed. You can see it right through to the front. And you can see it right to the back, underneath the tongue, all exposed wiring. Is that a problem? Well, you bet it can be. When you're in the off-road situation or uh, overlanding, you hit some rocks underneath this thing. Remember, it's off-road capable, folks. You have exposed wires on here. And guess what? There's also critters that love to eat these things. One of the biggest problems in BC are porcupines. Porcupines love wire. They will get in there and they will chew things up pretty bad. And there's also rats and mice that love these things. Why they don't have some kind of a conduit around there, like a metal conduit, is beyond me. Or have some kind of a, like a coroplast uh, cover underneath this whole thing, like they do in some of the other units. Remember, off-road capable, these things get damaged. Another issue that I have underneath here is, this is all exposed wood. Now, I've read about this, so it's all treated, and it's supposed to be fine. I don't see any rot, I don't see any issues, but honestly, uh, eventually, I mean, this is wood. 
it's something's gonna happen to it. I could see a little bit of, you know, like darkening in here. Is that the beginning of some rot? I have no idea. Anyways, if this is uh, at least covered with some other material, like uh, like a plastic or rubberized, you know, spray on sort of thing would be my preference. Um, or again, having like a, a big, you know, core plast sheet that goes right across the whole bottom, like you see in a lot of other units, just to cover that all up and to protect it from any rocks, critters, uh, or just general wear and tear. So here we are at the stairs. The issue that I have with these uh, stairs is, I mean, the design looks to be fairly decent. The problem is, is getting this thing up and stuck into the drive position. Now that went in fairly easy, but after you've been doing a bit of a drive, especially on a dusty, dirty road, or there's some mud inside there, it's next to impossible to open this thing up. I had to take a hammer to these lugs here at the end just to loosen the whole thing up. And then it's still really sticky. You gotta really get your hands in there and it jams up all the time. And there it goes and you can practically take your fingers off if you're not doing it right. I just think this could be designed a little bit better. They're pretty sturdy, I get that. I just think the whole design could be redone and, and made a little safer and a little bit easier to use for sure. All right, here we are on the inside of the unit. The fact that this radio was installed on here and there's no way to really shut it off so that it doesn't drain the battery when it's parked. It just seems a little goofy. I know you can get the, the battery cutoff switches installed. doesn't come with one. The other thing is at nighttime, when it's uh, working and it's installed right, this panel lights up and there's no way to dim it. You cannot turn the, you could, can't turn it down. It's just one brightness and then it just lights up the whole inside of this trailer. We have to cover this thing up with a towel and some kind of goofy kind of configuration to make it go dark. And then I thought, you know, I'm just going to disconnect this darn thing. So to do that, I had to take the microwave out, not a big deal, and then stuck my hand in there. And But it's still, you know, the cheap plastic cover on there doesn't go on right. It just wasn't installed correctly to begin with. The other thing that I found rather goofy on this trailer is the thermostat here. Now, this Dometic thermostat um, controls both the, the propane stove and the heat pump that's over there the big Dometic heat pump works great we plug this thing in electricity it cools the place down really well it does a great job no problem there the thermostat is is the problem the buttons on this thing just go squirrely sometimes it'll go as soon as you touch the up down buttons to get the temperature right now it's back on on degrees Fahrenheit this morning when I turned the heater on because it was cold in here when I first got up it was on Celsius I, it, this thing is really sensitive and it's just kind of goofy. I just think that this thing's going to go at some point in time and it looks like an expensive fix. So just give me the old slider, you know, the, the thing with the little mercury ball inside it, like, you know, you get in the house. That's all you really need. The, the modes, again, the same thing when you touch it, it goes from heat and cool on the heat pump to heat on and off on the propane heater on there. It, this is all goofy. This touch-sensitive screen on here is a real issue. Now, on the inside here, we've got like a little charging station, which is really a convenient thing to have for sure. Uh, here you've got a couple of USB plugs. This is a Type-A USB. You've got a 12-volt car charger here. And then you've got like a, a voltage uh, readout, which is, which is nice. Turn it on, just push the button. Uh, and it's telling you right now that there's, you know, 12 volts in there, which is great. It's a wonderful thing to have. The only problem is when you plug this thing in, and usually you charge up your devices at night when you're going to bed, this thing just lights up and there's no way to dim this. So again, just like with the radio, you've got to cover this little unit up. They could have been a little flap on here. It would have been really nice to have. Other thing that drives me crazy is this kind of, the finishing on here is, is made of, I don't know what it is. It's the thinnest sheet of of film of some sort, like a fake wood pattern over top of the, the particle board. And I know why they do it, it's to keep the weight down and so on. But this material here, you just touch it. And practically with anything, it's just gonna, you can see it's starting to chip off here. And there's a whole bunch of little wear and tear, things like that all over. Here I'm showing you the dinette area at the, the front of the trailer. They had an interesting idea with this table and then they made it 
portable so that you could take it outside. I understand that's probably a benefit to some people. What I'd rather have seen in here would be the metal posts that have the little little hole at the bottom. You can just stick the, the posts in the hole and then underneath the table there's a matching one that goes. So you got a single pedestal to hold the table and then you can take the table and you can rotate it as necessary. This implementation here they have the fold out legs which honestly is a real nuisance. Where the problem really is is getting these legs uh, up and down when it's inside. There's just not enough room to maneuver this thing. The legs are just they're awkward, they're hard to fold in, the, the hinges are really super tight, and it's just not implemented very well. Now, if you want to use it outside, great, uh, I, I get that, but it's just a nuisance, especially you have to take this thing down every night to make it into a bed, because this forms the, the base here of the bed, it sits on these little, uh, little stops here, and then just even to fold those legs underneath, and there's like a little Velcro latch under, just to get that all working, and then lowering into position I mean, it's like a workout. You you definitely want to go have a sleep after that. It's it, it's very frustrating to get this thing into position. All right. So this was where the microwave was before I removed it. Now, again, I use this thing for off-road overlanding. I don't plug this thing into electricity. So why would I want to carry an extra 40, 50 pounds of microwave around and lose all that storage? For the first little while I was storing food inside the like my breads or you know whatever baked goods would go inside the microwave and that was about a space of about that high so all the rest of the space was completely useless so I just took the face plate off removed the the microwave and now I got a storage item I got these I got a bucket in here for all my cutlery and dishes and whatnot what I want to show you, when I pulled the microwave out, it actually kind of shocked me what was inside this thing. Again, it kind of goes back to this whole flimsy construction. It's just a bit of a nightmare how they put these things together. They completely cheap out in the routing of wire. They don't even route it. They just literally just lay it anywhere. Just let me take this bucket out of here. But check out the inside compartment here. Look at all the loose wiring here. It's just sitting there, laying there on the ground, <clears throat> on the bottom, just completely open to the elements. Take this out of the way here, just a big hole in there. And it's just sitting here lying. And that's what the microwave would actually be sitting on top of. Along the same lines as the microwave wiring nightmare there. This is the dinette seating area on the driver's side. And underneath here is the hot water tank and some interesting wiring going through here this is an absolute nightmare there is the heater there's the hot water tank but look at this spaghetti you can't figure out anything in here if you absolutely had to this is just an absolute nightmare and really embarrassing on the part of the manufacturer. I don't know how they can actually get away with this kind of stuff. This particular camper style does not have a bathroom in it. Some A-frame campers actually do have a bathroom. And where they have them, uh, I believe, is uh, in this little section over here of the dinette. There could be a little seating thing that maybe makes into a seat, but down below where this where storage is here right now, uh, I believe can be a little squatty potty or a little porta potty uh, situation. Uh, there's another one I've seen that I believe it's in this area where the microwave normally goes is a little thing that this lid opens up and I believe a little wall even comes up here as a little privacy thing for a, a bathroom. A completely different style obviously to this one. But just know there's no bathroom in, in this style of A-frame. And, and that's okay for me. I just use the porta potty. I bring it in here at night. It just tucks underneath the table. So that works okay. You know, not convenient sometimes, but at night it's great. There is a fan here in case you need it. So uh, that's not an issue. It's a little tight, but just be aware that no bathroom could make a difference for you, especially if you got little kids or you got to get up in the middle of the night, you know, go to the bathroom and there's another adult that's uh, sleeping in the other bed. One of the biggest issues that I've had with this camper, and it needs to be addressed very soon at an RV repair place, and it also speaks to the flimsy construction of these units, is the thickness of the walls. 
and in particular this back wall here has an issue it's actually i believe it's broken and it's due to the the construction methods that they use i'll lower this uh, gable end here shortly and i'm going to show you exactly what i mean but on this side here right about where this hinge is the wall is actually internally cracked now it, it can be repaired i'm taking it to an rv repair place in a couple weeks and uh, they're going to put a patch on it and i believe it's going to be stronger than the original but something to note it's just how it's constructed it's the engineering of this thing that that can cause an issue over time remember this is a back road or off-road kind of unit so it gets tossed around on these roads a fair bit that means that in the folded down position, when these gable ends are down and the roof is down, these gable ends actually pop around. They, they jump around a little bit inside under the roof. And so I've had to come up with a system temporarily to hold that up so that it doesn't move around as much. Let me just show you exactly what I mean here. I'm gonna lower this gable end. I'll just undo these latches here. I'm just going to slowly lower this down and you'll see right here along the top here I'm going to show you how it's actually bent the wall has actually bent you could see it the flex right here at this hinge you can see it right at this bolt here right there how it's actually bending the wall you can see there's a bit of a crease right here and it's actually bent now what i've had to do like i said is i've had to put something underneath that to keep it up just so that it doesn't continue to flex now it's internal i don't see any structural damage on the outside here on the inside you can see kind of Maybe along here, there's like a, a natural um, join between materials. And it's flexing somewhat in here as well. And it looks like it might even be beginning to tear a little bit in here. So at the RV dealership, what they're going to do is they're going to put a like a solid piece of aluminum or steel and somehow attach it to this. This is just a little aluminum C frame or a C channel that goes over top of whatever material is inside here. But this is only, that's like about an inch, inch and a quarter thick, and that's it. And so this thing of weighs, it's a lot, it's heavy. Um, it, I would say that this unit is probably a good 60, 70 pounds. And so the weight of this naturally bouncing around has caused this to flex. Something you really have to be careful of and something that's just driving me crazy about this unit. Another thing to point out about the A-frame campers is the obvious A-frameness to it and the lack of the ability to hang an awning off of this thing easily. Now, there are some third-party manufacturers that do make uh, awnings for these things, but uh, reading about them in the forums, they just don't seem to be very well constructed. They seem a bit flimsy, something that's not going to last an awful long time. And it's not a full awning. It's sort of a partial awning. You could look that one up, uh, just Google that, uh, awnings for A-frame campers. There's one manufacturer in particular that's popular, but they're super expensive. I believe Canadian they were upwards of about $800, which to me seems a little bit much considering, you know, this type of style of camping doesn't necessarily warrant, you know, having expensive accessories attached to the, to the trailer itself. So one of the things that I've noticed on forums is that people are just making awnings from tarps. And that's something that I have yet to test. Uh, I'll hopefully put that into another video at some point in the near future. I wanna see what a tarp system would look like. I already purchased a, a, a good sized tarp and three tent poles, but I have to figure out the process for actually doing that. I do notice actually on the trailer, there appears to be some attachment points here 
and I believe this is for an awning system. I'm not sure that nothing came with the trailer that I was aware of. I bought it secondhand. And on this side, there's also what looks to be some kind of an attachment point there, uh, but nothing that actually comes with the unit. And just as a note, it, it's, it's a challenge that you're gonna have to, to figure out. If you do want an awning, you'll have to figure some out. Or, you know, an alternative is to get something like a clamshell shelter tent or just some kind of picnic table shelter tent, something that's either enclosed or that just has a roof. Um, now this, the, the height of this door, I can reach exactly eight feet. So that's about eight feet there. It's highly unlikely that you'll find a shelter that is eight feet uh, on the side like that. So you can't really open the door and go straight into some kind of a shelter. If you do have a shelter, it's gonna have to be just at the end of the stair over here. And then something that uh, you'll just have to sort of duck into enough for the door to open up, swing out of the way and uh, that you can duck into uh, if it's raining. So just uh, be aware of that. It's not a real major concern for me, but uh, it might be for you. So just watch out for that. If it's raining outside, like if it's really raining and it's, it's howling, it's, it's blowing, you know, the rain's coming in sideways. When you got to take this thing down or put it up, you're exposing the inside of the trailer to water. So the sides are going to be soaking wet. And if you're if if you've got it set up and you're and you're taking it down, you're gonna to have to I, I've got a squeegee. I could just squeegee this off, or you'll have to towel it off beforehand because if you put it away wet, now it's gonna to start to leak as you're driving, and that stuff's gonna get into your bedding, it's gonna get on the floor and the counters, it's gonna to start to swell all the particle board inside. It's not gonna to be too pretty. So something you gotta really be careful of. And when you're setting up, it's exactly the same thing. Let's say the unit is dry and, and you want to set it up into pouring rain. Well, you know, the wind and rain is going to come pouring into that. Now, it doesn't take very long to set these walls up, like about a minute. But you're still exposing yourself to the elements and the potential of getting some water intrusion, uh, however slight. But repeated use, you know, if, if you're camping in bad weather, you know, opening and closing the unit, you're gonna get some water on your stuff. So just be careful of that. The A-frame camper, because of its unique style, and the fact that there's not a lot of these things on the road, really draws attention in the campground. So if you're a low key individual and you don't really want any attention or draw any attention to yourself, this may not be the right unit for you simply because it's so unique. People will stop and will comment on it. They want to look inside. They've never seen anything like it. If that's an issue for you, then, you know, that might be a problem. I was kind of taken aback when I first took this thing out, even in my driveway and, and getting it all prepped. I had people sort of walk by and, and want to see the inside and want to talk to you about it. It's a conversation starter for sure. It's a little disconcerting. I, I don't you know, I'm kind of more of a private person. Anyways, if that's something that bugs you, that's definitely something to watch out for when you're looking for an A-frame style camper. Another issue that you're gonna have with an A-frame camper, not this particular one, but all A-frame campers, is the fact that they're just a little bit more work than a, a regular hard-sided trailer. They're kind of like the teardrop trailers that you're always having to move buckets around. There's not a lot of storage in these things on the inside. There are on the outside, there's like, you know, big storage unit up front and so on, but just not a lot of permanent places to put stuff that's convenient. A little bit of storage on the inside only, and there's uh, not a ton under the sink. There's not a lot where the microwave is, and there's a little drawer in there, and a little bit on the one seat. It's not the best. So you haven't always move buckets all the time. Now, is that an issue for you? I don't really know. It, it isn't for me necessarily, because it's overall the right unit it's about 85% to my liking in terms of convenience and having all those things checked off on my list. But, you know, you are going to have a little bit more work with this unit for sure. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. It really does help us out. It lets us bring you more content. So uh, if you could do that, I'd really appreciate it. Thanks, and we'll see you next time. Got a hummingbird in the trailer. Come on, little fella, out you go. 
That's upsetting, isn't it? Yeah, it won't hurt. I'll take the wall down and you can make your escape. There we go. Not to worry, little one. Okay, here we go. Take this wall down and you can fly out. Go on. Go on. Hi. Well, you just landed right on my phone. There you go. Out you go. <laughs> that was pretty special. You definitely should like this video and subscribe because if you don't, I'm not going to make any more videos. <laughs> I'm losing it. I really am. I'm starting to get giddy because I'm this close to finishing this one.